G'day and welcome to the third integral that we have from Jim Caronius' list of 100 integrals. And this one is the, well we've only done two so far, but this one is the first one we've struck where the derivative of what's on the bottom doesn't match the top. The derivative of x squared minus 4 is 2x. Now if the 2 wasn't there, we stand quite a, well, a better than fighting chance of sorting it out. So our first step, in fact, will be to separate the 5x and the 2 because we can see our way ahead with the 5x. I'm going to put the 5 outside and leave the x here. And we're going to put the plus 2 and I'll leave the 2 outside. So now we have two separate integrals to discuss. This one is very close to a pattern that we're familiar with. What we notice is that if the derivative of this is 2x, a 2x here would be ideal. So let's make that adjustment. That's ready to go. <clears throat> now this one over here is slightly more problematic. The derivative of this is 2x, we have no x's at all on the top. And since this is a lower order polynomial than that, we can deal with this with partial fractions. So, this, for example, would be 5 on 2. The integral of this would be the logarithm of x squared minus 4. And since x squared minus 4 could conceivably be negative, it is wise for us to use the absolute value necessary. Now, the fact that this has been evaluated means we do need a constant already. Because without limits, we don't know the exact value of this. How are we going to split this up? Well, we'll put the dx here. We're going to create two fractions. This, of course, x squared minus 4, you should recognise as a difference between squares. x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now, since we have a positive coefficient, I'm going to put the x plus 2 here, so that when I multiply top and bottom here by x plus 2, I'm going to get a, a positive 2. And I'm going to put my x minus 2 here. And I know I'm going to have a negative sign here because I need my x's to disappear. Now, traditionally this is done on the side of the page. I don't have that luxury. Let's just imagine there's a 1 here. If I multiply top and bottom of this by x plus 2, to get x plus 2 over x squared minus 4, and I multiply top and bottom of this by x minus 2, I'm going to get x plus 2 minus x minus 2. What's that going to give me? Well, the x minus x will disappear, which is what we wanted. And I'm going to have 2 minus negative 2 is plus 4. So if I insist on having these ones here, this expression is going to give me a 4. So how do we adjust that? Well, let's make it this way. Whoops. I don't know what's wrong with me tonight. There we go. If I multiply that by 4 and divide that by 4, I've made the appropriate adjustment. And now that and this match beautifully. I hope that makes sense to you. x plus 2, x minus 2, the x minus x disappears, the 2 minus negative 2 gives me the 4, and I'll get x squared minus 4. So I can evaluate this now because the derivative of x minus 2 
is 1. The derivative of x plus 2 is 1. I have two logarithmic expressions coming up. So let's look at them. I'll just copy that out. Plus a half. And I'm going to keep this in brackets. I'm going to get the logarithm of x minus 2, absolute value, minus the logarithm of x plus 2, plus c. Now, this c will be different from that c. I'll call it c1 and c2, because now that we've evaluated this integral, it will have its own constant, and the two constants would combine. We don't worry too much about that. We'll just evaluate the constant at the end. Now, here we go. I'll stay with black ink now. What have we got? I'm going to take half out as a common factor. And I'm going to have... I'm you're going to use my logarithmic rules now. We're in tidy up mode now. I'm going to move this 5 inside. So I'm going to get the logarithm of x squared minus 4 to the power 5 plus... Now I've taken this half out the front. I'm going to evaluate this. This will be the logarithm. Since I'm subtracting the logarithms, I'm dividing the numbers. And I can combine these. I'm adding, adding the two logarithms, so it means I'm going to be multiplying the numbers. Sorry, times. Actually, I don't even need that now. Now, we might be tempted to stop there, but this x squared minus 4, we remember, is a difference between squares. Now, I'm running out of room, so I will try and, we'll try and fit it in. I'm just going to go across the page and then hopefully fit the last bit in on the bottom of the board here. Here we have a half logarithm. I'm going to write this as x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now it's going to be x plus 2 to the power 5, x minus 2 to the power 5, that's that bit, times x minus 2 over x plus 2. Notice, this x plus 2 will divide into this, so we're going to have x plus 2 to the 4th power. And we're going to have this product here, which will be x minus 2 to the 6th power. Notice a 4th power and a 6th power would both be positive, which makes this absolute value a little bit redundant. But I'm going to deal with this half. We could move the half inside. And this would become a logarithm of this expression to the power of half, which is the square root, or if you like, just multiply the indices by the 4 times a half and the 6 times a half. And we get the logarithm of x plus 2 squared x minus 2 cubed. And that's a tidier form. And I really don't see any way of improving that greatly. But there it is, a little bit more work. Quick rehearsal. We did our, we saw a function over a function. We saw that this, the order of this polynomial is one less than the order of that. And we tried out our derivative. The derivative of this was 2x, didn't quite match. So it wasn't a perfect logarithm. We split it up. We split the 5x and the 2 into two separate integrals. We dealt with this one as a proper logarithm. This one had to be separated as partial fractions because 
the order of this was two less than that. I didn't have the luxury of working on the side of the page, so you had to bear with me in resolving that. We've got our logarithms and the rest of it is just using our logarithm laws to tidy up the expression. Um, you, you may, that might be quite acceptable as a test result, but I think you would honestly seek for that one. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please click the like button and leave your comment. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, I encourage you to subscribe and find out about future videos. And thank you very, very much for watching.